All right, so we're going to show you what to do as a student uh, going into a case. So first things first, come on in, this room's not sterile. If it is sterile, make sure you're completely sterile gown and gloved. Uh, mask on, hat on, and booties on uh, before you come in. So sterile means uh, there's something open. If you see silver tables, that means it's not opened yet. First thing you want to do is come over to the board and write your name on here. So you want to write your first and last name, and then if you're a student, MS, and then three, four. Um, if you're a resident, obviously PGY. So you want, want to make sure that the everyone in the OR knows who you are uh, before you um, get scrubbed in. Because the last thing you want to do is, is try to spell your name to the nurse um, through, you know, uh, while the case is going on. Um, the second thing you want to do is kind of find out where everything is. So if some a resident or a doctor asks you where or to pull something, uh, you want to go into the supply cabinet. So just identify where everything is. So if you need to pull your own gown, they're up here, gloves down here, and then <clears throat> certain things like uh, preps, uh, dressings, etc., um, can be found obviously uh, throughout here. A lot of a lot of places have uh, suture, which is um, in the room, uh, versus other places that have. Um, carts that are outside the room where all the sutures are found. If you don't know where something is, just ask. If you need alcohol swabs and you can't find any in here, perhaps they're up at the head of the, book, the bed where anesthesia is. So you want to make sure you ask before you take anything um, for um, uh, prepping the patient. Next thing you want to do is to make sure you know how to put an arm board on. Um, this, for some reason, is a very difficult part of um, uh, the OR for a lot of people. So we're going to show you how to do that today. Um, if a patient, usually the, uh, the arm board on the outside, so the one not closest to the door, is usually attached. So usually this one's attached, and then this one is open, so the bed can come up, the patient can come over, and then the arm board can be attached. What we want to show you uh, is how to actually attach the arm board. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure these lips here are um, at 90 degrees. So you want this, this um, uh, arm board to be able to attach directly 90 degrees to the bed. You don't want this um, uh, device kind of shifted 45 or 90 degrees from the arm board because it makes it a lot more difficult. So <clears throat> as long as you put this um, exactly 90 degrees to the bed, it makes it a lot easier. There's usually a little tab down here. You want to just release that to open up the jaws this will slide onto, these are the arm board um, rails here. So this board slides in, it grips on the top, push down, grips on the bottom, releases, and then that arm board is secure. Then <clears throat> that arm board can, can be moved from side to side um, in order for the patient to be more comfortable when they lay down on the bed. Our next step too, um, when you're setting up this room, so this is a lot of room setup, is our tourniquet. So um, a lot of um, places have these new digital tourniquets. Uh, some of them are manual where you have to push buttons up and down. Um, and this tourniquet here has two different um, uh, gauges. So usually this is a primary one. I know a lot of times we talk about red is uh, right and uh, blue is left, uh, but this is, uh, universally just the primary tourniquet and a secondary tourniquet. So uh, usually we like to set up the red one. With these digital ones, we push that number and then we determine what uh, pressure we want those tourniquets at. For this one, for demo, we'll set it at um, 300 millimeters of mercury. Then you hit the check button saying okay, and then the minute. So you just wanna make sure that uh, everyone's on the same page of how many minutes you want set on the tourniquet. You can go up one by one or you can hold and go by uh, fives. So we'll go up to 120 just for purposes of, oh, I'm sorry, overshot. One, two, three, four, five, and then check mark. So now the tourniquet is set so the nurse doesn't have to do that when they come back in. Making sure that these two leads are plugged in properly. And then after the tourniquet's put on, making sure these two leads are plugged into the tourniquet. Uh, the last thing you want is for the tourniquet to go up when it's not um, uh, secured and not blowing up. So. We kind of loosen this up right here and then grab our tourniquet. So usually the tourniquets are set, um, or, sorry, the different sizes are within here. So we'll look for what we're looking for. Um, for this purpose today, we're gonna do an ankle tourniquet. Um, 18 inches, which is found on the back. And then a lot of them are color coded. So uh, red for ankle, purple for thigh, 
Um, and then there's in-between uh, colors of green uh, and uh, yellow as well. So this is sterile currently, but when we put them on, they're usually not sterile. So you can go ahead and prep this and open this as long as you're, uh, everyone's okay with the sizes. So this gets opened up and then this gets thrown away. Two different ways to uh, protect the skin against the tourniquet. One is um, uh, this, which is uh, cast padding. It's real soft and fluffy. And the other one is a stockinette, which will go um, over the, uh, the body part and then the, cat, or the uh, tourniquet goes on top of it. So we're gonna uh, show how to do that while um, Dr. Pratt gets ready, I'm gonna show how to do lights. So in the OR, before everything's prepped, you can touch whatever you want. And it's smart to prep the lights to where you think that they're uh, most likely that the lights are gonna be um, needed. Right now, this light is pointing at the floor and this light is pointing at anesthesia. So clearly it needs to be moved a little bit uh, not necessarily in the perfect position, but it's some kind of position. So right now, since it's not prepped or it's not sterile, we can grab it by the light handle and move over here. And obviously we're going to be pointing toward the foot and ankle. So we have that light pointed there. And then we can go over here and do the same thing. Grab this light, move it over, make sure that these uh, lever arms at the top aren't going to touch each other. And then go ahead and just point them to the uh, proper position. After the case is... Um, uh, prepped and sterile and and during the case this gets a little cover that goes over top and is no longer um, Something that you as a non scrub student can touch. So if you're a student and scrubbed Yes, go ahead and touch that sterile uh, handle and then move it around for the uh, For the surgeon if you are not scrubbed It's also helpful if the non scrub student can grab the light by this non sterile portion so um, preferably on the back or on the sides and then you can move this around to wherever the light is needed. Um, especially if you're going from, you know, if the uh, incisions go from medial to lateral, it's smart to be able to uh, move this for the, the doctor so it's not um, one more thing that they have to do. Going back to the tourniquet, so uh, we have these two different ways to put on a tourniquet. This is a stockinette, it slides right over the, the patient's leg. Uh, usually they're a little small, so we'll do this. Um, and then the tourniquet will go on top of this. The other way to do it is for um, uh, cast padding. So uh, this stuff rips really easily. Um, so you just kind of um, pick where you want the tourniquet to be. So ankle tourniquets going around, uh, right around the medial and lateral malleolus. And then a calf tourniquet, which will go around um, the um, mid portion of the calf. But we'll do an ankle tourniquet today. So this, um, you know, usually it's a collaborative effort. Uh, we're just gonna wrap this leg or wrap this ankle with the uh, cast padding a couple times. Um, make it nice and padded so that way it doesn't impinge any skin. Um, a few times around is, is needed and then you can just kinda rip that right off. Now here's the application of the tourniquets. This is a big um, a Velcro mess here. So you wanna be, you know, kind of coordinated when you do this. So this is gonna open up all the way to a long band, take out these, um, the tubing, and this long band that's gonna wrap around the ankle. This band goes around like this. The colored portion, so whatever color this is, this, these are kind of um, drawstrings. So that goes down first. The second portion goes down across here. Now what you can do is utilize these ribbons and kind of um, get a good grip on it like this. And then with the other hand, grabbing the Velcro and pulling as hard as you can, and then swinging that Velcro around and attaching it all the way around and then securing it with these ribbons, which you'll tie um, around just so the um, ribbons aren't everywhere and also to keep that Velcro down. So now you have an applied tourniquet and you can prep all the way to that tourniquet. There are certain things that you can put around the tourniquet to um, protect it from obviously the, the surgery, but also with the prep to make sure it doesn't get too dirty. Uh, there's something called a 1010 drape, which is a sticky drape that goes all the way around. Uh, you can put a blue towel around that with a towel clamp, um, but something needs to, or should be put around this tourniquet to make sure that it doesn't get too dirty. 
The final step of the tourniquet, like I said before, is to make sure that this isn't just flopping in the breeze. You want to secure this to the leads that came from the tourniquet. So these two, doesn't matter which one attaches to which, one attaches to here, one attaches to here, and then the tourniquet's ready to go. To release them at the end of the case, after the tourniquet's off and ever, after the, the patients are done with surgery, this metal uh, clamp here can be pushed down and then the tourniquet leads can pop off. The final thing we're gonna talk about um, with the tourniquet and then we'll um, uh, finish off with our Mayo stand is how to inflate and deflate it. Um, that's not attached, is it? Okay, I don't want you. So um, when we're inflating a tourniquet, the first thing, um, you know, obviously after the surgeon says inflate the tourniquet, um, it's a one push, boom, and then it's inflated. Obviously the cuff isn't uh, attached. But what we, what we wanna also teach is how to do the deflate. To deflate, you're gonna grab that deflate button, pull down all the way and hold it, hold it, hold it, and then it'll pop up and then that cuff will deflate. So that was just, you know, um, if someone asks you and you're the only one unscrubbed in the room and the tourniquet needs to go down, that's how you do that. Lastly, if you are lucky enough to be in a case or scrubbed into a case, um, a lot of times, um, a lot of doctors use this called a Mayo stand. A uh, Mayo stand um, kind of around the midsection or belly of the patient. So that way the instruments are readily available for the uh, doctors and residents and students during the case. If the table has to go up and down, the Mayo stand has to adapt and go up and down as well. So what I 